Good morning, Phil. Hey, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming in this morning. Uh, the ships are wonderful. They're, uh, we're, I'm wondering, when did you begin uh, building the ship models, and what attracted you to the art? Well, you know, I started uh, the first one back, I don't want to tell you how many decades, when I was going through graduate school. It was a fairly intense program, and I found it just a great relief to be using a different part of my small brain. Oh. And uh, that got me going. But uh, for me, it's just, I, I, I don't want to call it an escape. It's just a, using a different part of your, uh, let's say, skill set, and it's it's a great relaxation, uh, particularly after sort of a, what I would call intense office type work. Oh, now uh, there's scale representations of ships, and right. uh, what scale is it that you work in? They vary. I just want a scale that is allows me to have a model that's let's say no bigger than three feet, including mm -hmm. the bow spread. Um, and large enough that the detail is not too small. Right. Uh, so I kind of wing it as to the scale I want to use. And typically, how long does it take for you to complete a ship? Five to ten years. For one ship? Yes. Wow. And I'm not always going, I, I, I don't, I'm not going full time. I might go through a spurt mm -hmm. where I might be doing it uh, every night for, for a week and then I might not do anything for two months. And there, okay. The art is in what I'm trying to replicate. I really think these ships, uh, I might call them industrial art, but uh, there's there's a beauty to them and I, there's, a, there's a winning selection process mm -hmm. in what I want to build. Now, do you work from scratch or yes. do you work from a kit? Not Absolutely. from a kit, this is all from scratch. I do, in one instance I had a good set of plans which I had to modify in mm -hmm. detail, but no, in no way is it uh, Kit. No kidding. Oh, that's now, and you work in wood, plastic, yes. resin. Yes, oh, no, uh, wood. There's, mm -hmm. there's. You can buy scale model lumber from various supply stores, and they can be in uh, teak, mahogany, and something called basswood, which is a beautiful wood to work for. It's it, with. It's a very fine grain, and it's reasonably strong. Yeah, unlike balsa wood, you can't use balsa wood. It just it's, it doesn't have strength to it. But uh, basswood's a beautiful wood to work with. And um, of the models here, there are four on display here in the library. Which one would you have? Uh, would you consider the most difficult or challenging? Without, without question, this one right here. Because if you come around this side, um, what I wanted to achieve was what we is a replication of the actual construction. And each one of those ribs probably, I'm trying to remember, uh, had uh, eight separate pieces to them, all pegged together. Uh, just about everything here is about as realistic as possible. I mean, as an example, the steering me mechanism actually works, and it's about a 10 to 1 gear ratio. Every one of the uh, doors work. The cabin inside is fully equipped with bunks. Uh, the galley stove up in the bow is, is a reasonable facsimile of what they actually had. And of course, uh, all of the running rigging actually has working blocks with brass sh really? sheets. Really? Uh, a certain amount of masochism in doing it in this detail. <laughs> Well, you would know. Now, I'm guessing that each piece has a story, but I'm wondering which is your favorite story. What story do you like to tell about? This, this one, because mm -hmm. I, I really, in a way, bit off more than I could chew. And that once I got to the rigging, uh, that took a, a much more work than I thought, because all of the metal fittings had to be made from scratch. And very frankly, it's tough on your hands, because you're doing this all with little hand tools. Um, and I start with brass or copper, and then I paint it to make it look like iron. Um, but that's, that, there's, it's just tedious. Mm -hmm. um, and then to get the rigging <laughs> so it's properly taut and there's no slack, um, that'll bring a grown man to uh, be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, verbal with uh, unnecessary uh, slang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, these are wonderful. It was designed by for the U.S. government as a revenue cutter in about 1850. Mm -hmm. It had to be fast to intercept any kind of commerce coming in and out of the country to make sure that they declared their goods. Um, so it had to be fast sailing. It didn't have to carry cargo, but it had to be able to go uh, well out to sea. And for that period, it's the height of technology. And I could get good plans. 
And the beauty of this is this is the America, which was the first winner of the America Cup. And I just love the lines. Uh, this again was, all of these models are plank and frame. They're not solid, they're actually framed and plank. Uh, and uh, this is just a you know, historically important model. This, this was the first model, and I just simply got some uh, uh, renderings of that out of a magazine, and then just made plans from the magazine uh, rendering. And this was my first effort. And this was a one design sloop. This is and your I, first effort? Yeah. I actually met the man who designed it. Um, he was sort of, a, his avocation was yacht designing. It was not his occupation. And it's just, it's just nice lines. I, mm -hmm. I like it because of the lines. And again, this was my first effort at doing plank and frame. And you can see on the other side the frames. And... Uh, those were steam laminated and then uh, steam bent and then laminated with blue. Just again, I, I, I have a it's, a it's it's a challenge and fun to actually try to do the the framing mm -hmm. and then the planking. And then this one here is probably the most famous early one design racing boat. It's called the Star and it's just a classic. It was designed by a very very famous. Uh, uh, yacht designer Hershoff, who went on to design some of the uh, America's Cup J boats, but it's just to me, it's just it's it's a uh, it's kind of like a early Ferrari. Maybe oh. it's not the best racer today, but in its time, it was an absolute classic, and has been used in many Olympics. And this was probably the most accurate in terms of detail. And this was, I'm sorry, was this from a plan or this was not? Uh, this was I was able to get scrap. plans from the mm -hmm. Star Association. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I, of course, I had to, there's a difference between, let's say, the designer plans and the construction plans. Mm -hmm. and so you kind of have to wing it to figure out what the actual construction looked like. They are magnificent. Where do you keep these? Uh, at home. Oh, do you? <laughs> they are running out of a bit of space. I'll bet. <laughs> we thank you very much for sharing these with us, and we're proud to have displayed them. Well, it's, it's a treat to be a part of the library. Oh, well, thank you.